Hello everyone, my name is Desmond and welcome to a new session of Lightning Talk. After the last time when I talked about doing diagrams in system design, I received a lot of support and also questions about other topics in the presentation of system design. So today in this talk, what I want to do is talk about my formula for doing storytelling in system design. Now, storytelling is very important. In a system design interview or presentation, you need to be able to both have your diagram tell a good story, but also be able to verbally go through it to flesh out your use case and then to lay out your functionality before you can go into advanced topics such as optimization and uh, scaling and so on and so forth. So in the spirit, same spirit as the last video, I want to talk about a formula for making clear system design. Now, some of you may think this is dogmatic or very basic, but I think give it a shot and you will see a lot of conversation ended up being a lot more clear. So let's get started. <laughs> Today, uh, I want to share with you uh, my four rules for telling a story in system design. There are actually a lot more rules, but I think these four are good to get started with. So let us go through them. The first one is saying your story needs to start and end with the customer or a client. When you have a use case, typically you're either designing a system that's designed to be used with a real world customer, a real person, or sometimes a client, which I will define as either some code that will call your library, maybe call your service, or another part of the system you're integrating, such as one that is owned by a tier, tier team. So the story must begin and end with the customer or the client. Uh, by having this rule, you're ensuring you are talking about things with a set direction. You're covering a certain business use case without introducing anything extraneous and without telling the story in the middle. The next rule is that your story must be straightforward and there will always be a sentence with a subject, verb, and object. This means definitely no passive form. Something is triggered, something is called by something else. But well, this is actually not too bad. Step is harder to understand. The worst case is you omit the subject. Uh, this method gets called, and then this thing gets returned. Uh, who is calling it? Who is returning it? It is very unclear. So I would recommend just going with very straightforward subject, verb, object. This is starting to sound like an English lesson, but I will make it very clear by using examples. Now, the third rule is that every character can only act when it's triggered by another character, by the customer, or by a timer. Just like when we tell a story, the flow of the story, imagine your camera is starting with your customer or the client, and then it keeps passing down to introduce ever more characters, ever more components in your system design. But everything can only act if they are being triggered by something else. So this means a service cannot send something to something else. This also means a database cannot simply send their data to a, to a, to a service. Um, a service would make a query to the database, and then a service on it is also in turn triggered by something else, like a client. Uh, again, this will come together a little bit later. The fourth rule is that every character must be created before it can be triggered, and it should be introduced right before it is triggered. So this is more of a house cleaning rule to avoid becoming chaotic. This means that you can't suddenly be talking about something you haven't designed or haven't drawn on the board. And then this also means that um, you shouldn't be introducing services too early, like suddenly introducing a database when you haven't even begun to talk about what could be making a query to it. So let us take a look at an example. <laughs> Let's take a look at a poor example first. So this is a poor example. This is uh, a very typical uh, question, warm-up question about uh, making a call to a web page uh, which loads a service. So I deliberately didn't really have a particular domain, just so I want to keep it very simple and just talk about the communication and the storytelling. And this is a paraphrasing of an actual response I got from an interview and actually a quite popular type of description. So it's saying, we make a call to the server and it returns the web page. Okay? The server has a DNS which gets us the IP address. 
So the logic here is a little bit off, but sure, you, you kind of see what it means. The IP address is used to call the server. That is correct. We then call the web service to retrieve the record. There is a load balancer for the web service to balance the load. Sometimes it's location based. The database sends the record to the web service and the record is sorted and paginated and we return it to the customer. So it's kind of chaotic. I think you can already starting to find, um, but if things get more complex than this, then um, you can imagine uh, the, the whole conversation will have a lot of question. Uh, for example, uh, let us try to actually draw our diagram based on this. And let us pretend that we are either really dumb or the topic is really complex, so we can only keep up with exactly what's being said. This gets us something that looks like this. Let's make it bigger. A look. Now, we make a call to the server and it returns a web page. Okay, so now we got a web page. The server has a DNS, right? So part of the server is a DNS and it gets us the IP address from somewhere. I don't know where. The IP address is used to call the server. So yeah, something uh, is using the IP address to call the server um, for, for some reason. Right? Uh, we then call the web service to retrieve the record. So we are calling the web service to retrieve the record. I guess it goes like this. Oh, there's a load balancer for the web service. So we have to revise our story, which is, by the way, perfectly fine but you want to make sure you do it for the right reason, such as when you start to refactor, when you discover a better way of doing things. But anyways, let's just refactor it. So there's a load balancer now to balance the load. Sometimes it's location-based, great. Now the database sends the record to the web service. Uh, sure, so we have a database and it's sending the data, uh, data web service um, for some reason, I guess. Oh, the record is sorted and paginated and we return it to the customer. So I guess it's being sent to the web service. So the web service now have the data, but we are actually returning it to the customer. Now, who is we? I guess it's me, it's, it's Desmond and the interviewee. So this is my extreme mental picture for this design. And obviously this is not gonna work. Uh, and um, this example is a bit extreme because your mind is able to fill in a lot of gaps as you listen to this. But again, it makes something super trivial much more complex, leaving everybody puzzled. Okay? So this is because the answer didn't really follow those rules. Right? The, it didn't really start with the customer. It started with we, which is actually not a part of the system. Uh, you don't expect a developer to personally make a call to the web service. Sometimes people say the customer make a call to the web service. Um, but even then, it's actually not super precise. Right? So uh, let's follow rule one, the customer uh, make a call to the web service and then return to the customer. So rule one is good, right? But then now the customer is making a call. I guess it's uh, he or she is somebody super technical and actually either plug the internet cable uh, on their head or maybe they're using curl or something. Uh, so Actually, that's not true, right? Because there's a browser being used. Now, uh, the story needs to be story straightforward and there's always a subject, verb, and object. Um, but in this case, uh, it's not so much. Uh, so it, most of it has it, but here the web address is used to call the, the server, right? So a passive sentence, really leaving it blank. Uh, who is doing it for what reason? So um, leaving room for incorrect interpretation. Uh, and then here saying there is a load balancer for it to balance the load, sometimes it's location-based. So this one is like a, a comment that's out of nowhere. Um, it's kind of describing a picture somewhere, but uh, a better situation is to uh, talk about this before the web service, right? And then talk about maybe um, the browser would make a call to the load balancer, um, and then the load balancer would route the traffic to the web service host. Um, see, that is a more straightforward subject, verb, object way of saying this. Uh, the rule that's really being violated in this, this case is rule number three. Um, every character needs to be act when it's triggered by another character. So here, um, there's no 
sequence, right? Um, and everybody is sort of doing their thing. In fact, I use the word sequence because you may have already noticed that, hey, this is basically drawing a sequence diagram. And that's exactly what this is. It's being able to describe your story like a sequence diagram. Uh, and then every character must be created before it can trigger and so on and so forth. I think not too bad, right? Except this load balancer um, could have been talked about a little bit earlier because it really needs to act between the customer or the client and the server. So this is a story that violates the rules and this is the mental picture we are drawing from this story. Uh, imagine this is a much more complex system design. Uh, you don't really want your storytelling or your communication to get in the way. So let's give it a shot, right? So how can we actually describe the proper flow for this question? Uh, let us move a bit up there. And then I won't be typing. I will just kind of be talking just to um, make the video a little bit shorter. But I want to have our rule in the same way. Here we are. Now, let's talk about the story of making a call to a web server uh, to load the app and then making some uh, service call to retrieve some data and displaying it. That is the use case. The user will enter the URL into a browser. The browser will first make a call to a DNS service to translate the URL into an IP address. The browser will then send a HTTP call using that URL. And this HTTP call, uh, sorry, using that IP address, and this will land in a load balancer <laughs> for the web server. A load balancer will then route traffic to one of those service hosts. Sometimes it could be location-based, um, like a CDN. And um, the server would serve the static content which could be a package, front end application, and return it to the browser. Now, the browser would then be able to run the app, which I forgot to actually put here. Is that, that's why I called, it my, I called my own miss, right? The app would then make a call to our web service through a load balancer. And the load balancer would route the traffic to one of the service fleet, and this is a stateless service. The service will make a database query to query for the data that we need, and the query result will get returned to the browser in a paginated response, which then gets displayed in a paginated component uh, to the user. So that's completing the story of loading this. Uh, actually, one of my sentences about going through the load balancer is actually a little bit more complex. Um, so it's really easy, you can see, to try to skip over. Right? But in this case, maybe it's overkill. But just remember, when you are dealing with extremely complex interactions, every little bit of clarity comes. So yeah, this concludes the second lightning talk about system design. This is about how to tell a very clear story by using a very basic formula. I hope this is useful to get you off some uh, complex conversations that maybe you are disagreeing, but really you're talking about the same thing or you're having trouble getting your message across. I am Desmond and uh, thank you and please give me any feedback on the content.